record. Thank you. Um, and I will share my screen. Great, thank you all for joining. Um, oh, wrong slide. Uh, the city has engaged with community members to co-create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board and commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. Um, for more information about this vision and the community engagement processes, you can visit our website. Um, the following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support the, this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to identify themselves using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole um, name before being allowed to speak online. Um, we are only virtual right now. So um, we'll open it up for public participation here shortly. Um, and if anybody would like to speak, you have three minutes and you can do that by um, raising your hand on Zoom. I will call on you um, in the order that I see hands raised. I don't think I see anybody on the phone. Um, so we'll skip that. Uh, just a quick, oh, I'm sorry. Just a quick little reminder. Um, in Zoom meeting, you can also raise your hand um, using the reactions button. And I'll turn it back over. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the minutes um, from the previous uh, DAB board meeting, and there are no uh, minutes to approve this month. So we're, we're um, holding off on those until next month. So we'll move on to public participation, and Amanda is says there's nobody nobody here this would uh, be participation for general not related yeah. to the project i'm sorry there was nobody here on the phone so i kind of skipped over that part but if anybody um that is attending right now would like to to talk about anything other than the item on the agenda today um now's your chance to raise your hand okay Give them just a moment, but I don't see any hands raised. Okay. All right. Um, so the next item on the agenda is the um is the discussion item for um the project review. And the project review uh this evening is 1155 Alpine Avenue. Um there's two buildings. And um before we start, I need to ask if any DAB members need to make any disclosures for potential conflicts of interest. Anybody need to Not raise anyone. that concern? Okay, good. Um, so then um, the next item on the um, project review is the overview, brief overview by the staff and then a, a 15 minute summary by the applicant. So is the applicant on yet? It, uh, Adam yeah. is part of the applicant team, but I think they maybe wanted someone from CGF to do the presentation. And I'll start adding them now. Yeah, that's that's right. And um, um, Michelle Crane, um, Deputy Director of Facilities, looks like she's an attendee. Uh, she may have some opening remarks if uh, she could be promoted to a panelist there. Is the architect available? Yeah, the, the full team is also standing by. Okay, great. So wh why don't we start with um, with someone from the applicants team sort of introducing themselves and their teammates before we get into this brief summary. We still have the staff introduction, Todd. The staff for? City staff introduces the project. Okay. To do some background around it. Okay. Well, learn. let's start there then. Um, okay. So the staff members who were involved in the project. 
Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Seeing um, presentation view. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'll just briefly um, go over the project where it is in the process and then provide a bit of context and background um, as requested by um, some board members during the agenda meeting. <clears throat> um, so the project before you today is um, 1155 Alpine Avenue. Um, it's in for site review. This is the city of Boulder Western City Campus. Uh, this is part of the broader implementation of the Alpine Balsam Area Plan. Um, the site encompasses the former Boulder Community Hospital Pavilion Building and Parking Garage. Um, this is one of four development review applications that are currently under review for redevelopment of... Um, oh, Charles just told me I'm in notes view. Okay, hold on. There we go. Um, one of four development review applications that are under review for redevelopment of the Boulder Community Hospital site. Uh, the other buildings under review are all subject to form-based code. Um, this project is subject to site review with form-based code overlay. Um, the project includes two buildings, the pavilion building and the parking garage. The pavilion building is proposed to be a governmental facility and office building. Um, housing the new city offices. The building size is uh, roughly 117,000 square feet, which is four stories above grade and a basement level. Um, there's a public plaza planned on the north side of the building and a paseo um, that runs from Broadway to North Boulder Park, east-west through the site. The, uh, as I mentioned, the pavilion building is subject to site review with form-based code overlay. Um, the existing parking structure is a total of six stories with 426 parking spaces in uh, 119,000 square feet. Six stories doesn't seem right. I believe it's three stories now and it's proposed to be four with an underground. Um, this uh, The parking garage is intended to provide shared parking for the entire development, so both the office uses and the residential uses. Um, this slide just shows the overall site plan of the Boulder Community Hospital site. Um, so the buildings that are shaded in gray are the ones that we are, um, well, the two of the three, not the building mark number seven is not included in the review today, but um, the other two buildings that are shaded in gray are what we are looking at today. And then you can see the outlines of the other um, residential and mixed use buildings proposed on the remainder of the site. Um, you can see 11th Street, which is proposed to um, connect uh, through the site north-south. And then as mentioned before, which isn't really shown very well on this, is um, there will be a paseo that runs to the north of the pavilion building um, and crosses to North Boulder Park. Um, so just some context using some renderings. Um, these are the other buildings in the project that are um, subject to form-based code review and which are all um, kind of nearing completion in terms of development review. They're um, gearing up to go to uh, planning board sometime this summer. Um, so this is a view looking east along Balsam Avenue that includes buildings A, B, and C. Buildings A and B are entirely residential. Building C is proposed to be mixed use. That would be on the corner of Balsam and Broadway. Uh, this is another rendering just showing kind of the entire um, development that proposed build out um, looking east again along Balsam and kind of showing the um, flood improvements along Balsam there. Um, you can see here the Boulder, the uh, pavilion building is just a massing model and is not shown with any architectural detail, but that's roughly the size. Um, this is a view looking south along 11th Street, the new 11th Street connection that includes buildings B and C, and then the uh, massing model of the pavilion there. So this is kind of what it would look like if you were coming down 11th from Balsam. Uh, this is a view looking east along Alpine Avenue that includes uh, building D and the pavilion building. Again, just shown as a massing model, but for scale. And then this is just an aerial view of the entire project looking south, um, showing the general site layout. Um, again, the dark gray building is the pavilion building, which we're discussing today in the parking garage um, south across Alpine there. 
And um, that's really it for my presentation. I just wanted to show some general context for the project. Okay. Thanks, Chandler. Okay, so um, the applicant um, has about uh, has about 15 minutes and when we're sort of constraining you on time, but we'd like to get kind of an overview summary of the of the project. And um, but I would also like for who, who's ever going to make that presentation to uh, introduce your uh, team members uh, who are here with you. Certainly, uh, Justin Brooks from ZGF Architects, um, here representing ZGF Architects on behalf of the design team. Um, I do want to ask uh, Michelle or Adam if you did have any opening statements or, or, or comments you wanted to make before I introduce those of uh, my team that I am able to see online. Thanks, Justin. Um, this is Michelle Crane, Deputy Director of Facilities and Fleet, and I'll be very brief, but we are very excited to bring the project uh, forward to you today for uh, some review and, and feedback. This has been um, a project many, many years in the planning phases uh, as we look to really address a lot of uh, infrastructure needs in our city buildings um, to meet our climate goals, uh, better serve our community um, than what we are doing today and take good uh, care of our assets moving forward. So. Um, we're pretty thrilled with what we've, we've got to share with you. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Justin uh, to present the project to you. Thanks. Excellent. Um, I'll introduce my team, at least those I can see. I apologize if I miss somebody. Uh, Keegan Raleigh is an architect with CGF Architects uh, on, on the phone here as well. Chris Smith, an architect with CGF Architects. Jeff Dawson uh, with Studio Architect Architecture um, out of Older, he is here as well today, and um, we may have Carol Adams as well on the phone, though I'm unable to, to see if she's in attendance. Um, I'll go ahead and share screen before I do that, just a quick audio and video check that you're able to both hear and see me. Good, great. All right. If it's possible for the host to enable participant sharing uh, for me, that would be fabulous. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, just confirming everybody has a PowerPoint up on their screen. Just give me a quick thumbs up. Great, perfect. All right, so as Michelle said, we're really excited to be here today and um, I'll share a little bit about the project uh, just to give uh, sort of some approach context to how we've arrived where we are, uh, but most interested in hearing from you all and uh, hearing your advice and thoughts. So um, as Chandler introduced, we're here to share our work on the Western City, Boulder Western City campus. Uh, and Chandler did a great job of, of introducing the sort of whole campus context, including the housing projects, and as indicated at the north here, just south of Balsam and north of Alpine. Today, um, my team and I are going to focus on the pavilion and the parking garage and the associated site context uh, within the dash line here. The Brenton building exists within that. Uh, however, we're not proposing any major exterior changes to the Brenton building, so it will not be a major part of our conversation today. By way of just um, sort of understanding that there are both the projects uh, guiding principles that have led us in our design direction, that being uh, providing connection to the community uh, through the architecture of the site and the programming, connection to workplace uh, and a connection to nature. Uh, Boulder's an incredible place to be, to work, to live. And so we've uh, striven to create opportunities for that engagement with the natural environment. The city's uh, guiding pillars and principles are also in play around environmental sustainability, social responsibility, and financial stewardship. 
as Chandler mentioned, uh, the north half, more or less, the north side of Alpine also falls under the form based code overlay. And at the bottom of this chart, we won't go, we don't need to go through this, just to say there, are, as, as you are all very well familiar, uh, certain requirements under the form based code that we are uh, working to adhere to uh, best we can. Below that, important to note, this project is really highly driven by energy and energy performance and carbon reduction. Uh, so many of the design uh, moves and um, strategies have been couched around making a very high performance. Uh, we're excited to do that for the city of Boulder as a community that's really leading the charge and being responsible for climate change, uh, positive outcomes. Indicated on the left are the two primary buildings we'll talk about today, the pavilion at the top of the site with the solar panels represented on the roof and the parking garage to the south. I'll act as MC and take uh, primary uh, questions on the pavilion and uh, I'll ask Jeff Dawson to lean in where appropriate on the parking garage content. I do want to acknowledge that um, we have submitted twice prior to this meeting on this project through the site review um, process and uh, we know that there has been ongoing design development and adjustment uh, through those submissions so I want to clarify where we are in the process. The image on the screen I'm not going to go through all of the images submitted we have those as backup for our discussion but the images the image represented on the screen the design direction indicated there was our initial application. We have taken some adjustments as we, as we have moved forward, those being primarily to uh, detailing around windows, representation of stone, use of stone on the upper white volumes, as well as our use of solar shading, primarily around the south and east corner here, primary in the view, and some reduction of the visual impact of PV panels. The second submission started to indicate that reduction of the visual impact of those PV panels but also begins to show um, ideas around a scrimming or screening system that creates both visual privacy for staff workspaces in the upper volume of the building at this corner, while creating really um, important solar shading for this glass edge. I'll get into in just a moment why this corner is very important to us and expressed in this sort of unique and, and potentially iconic way. We feel like we've um, done a lot of work in the last uh, weeks and months as we've gone through those submissions. So. The images you're going to see today are uh, the latest and um, I think uh, most uh, representational of where we are at in the design, including the development and representation of the materials within making up the building form. I'll just step back from that for one moment. Um, and I saw that this was in the package uh, that you were delivered, but we did come at this from a, a really important point that uh, the pavilion building uh, on the current site, the, the hospital offices pavilion building is uh, to remain. And, and the charge here was to adapt that building into something that can be really uh, powerful and expressive uh, as a piece of architecture, but also um, create some really good civic spaces and maintain a really low impact on this building's carbon impact uh, as it's uh, put together, both embodied and operational. Uh, we explored a range of options for expanding the building. Ultimately, we sort of settled on a combination of all three of these, including some vertical expansion, horizontal expansion, and infill uh, around the courtyard area. So represented here is that we have expanded vertically a uh, single floor, Worth noting that the existing pavilion building just lets us in under the zoning code limitations on building height. Uh, so there is a little bit of compression on that upper floor, but we do get in under those limits. We also took some expansion towards the west in plan. And then there are two sort of civic or interactive moments at the two major um, civic corners of the building, at least those that we think are the major civic corners of the building, those being the intersection of the Alpine and Broadway. Uh, to the right of the screen here in yellow and the presence on the newly created courtyard within the campus itself on the left. The state of that design has started to develop in something that has a, I think a really interesting integration with landscape forms, building forms, and tries to create a campus frontage along Broadway as well as a gateway moment. Quickly just acknowledging that we do um, have the pleasure of using the pavilion building, but also the challenges of the floor to floor heights and existing structural and really importantly grade limitations. The relationship of grade to first floor of that building grade is significantly lower at the entry point 
um, that we are adapting that existing structure with the use of cross laminated timber or other mass timber elements to re again reduce that carbon impact. Those two buildings seen here in their current state, um, essentially major renovations here, both being reskinned and in the case of the pavilion, significantly restructured. The material palette tries to pull from uh, both regional and uh, locally inspired uh, motifs, the use of stone in compliance with form-based code for the major building volumes, secondary materials in the form of metal accent panels, perforated metal in the case of the sunscreens, and um, really uh, sort of grounding rusticated stone elements in the landscape. As I mentioned, performance is critically important. That's not just in the envelope, it's also in the building systems, it's in the uh, native and adaptive landscaping, the use of stormwater. Um, so it is a guiding and driving principle here. In this section, you can see the public space of the building is intended to connect from north to south, from Alpine to uh, the Paseo, through the building's internal public spaces. In plan, that starts to sort of shape up in a format of a building in L form, two volumes left and right, with these primary um, sort of interaction pieces at the Alpine at Broadway corner, as well as on the, the Paseo and Plaza. Uh, the piece on the Paseo and Plaza is a, is a multi-use space, uh, space, so flexible convening and conferencing space connected to a terrace. On the right bottom side of the image is a two-story space housing public uh, art, as well as some gallery and functioning sp function space. I'll take you for a quick walk around the site. So starting from the southeast corner, looking back at the intersection of Alpine and Broadway, uh, we are working through landscape walls expressed in the stone on the left, the more rustic expression to manage grade and bring us up to the existing uh, floor level for the pavilion. We're using a uh, stacked, horizontally stacked stone on the grounding elements, I call them. Those pieces, the lighter brown or the darker brown, more rusticated brown here that touch the ground uh, with vertical windows. Uh, and then the uh, lighter uh, use of limestone at the top. So as we move from the ground plane to the sky, there's sort of a smoothing and re refinement of the material starting from the most rustic of the ground plane and stepping up to smoother as we move vertically. Sun shading is imagined as uh, perforated and folded metal panels. We are also exploring the idea of fins that may have some um, angle or bend in plan. From this view, we can identify uh, the major entry. Visually, we're trying to bring uh, both people and visual uh, connection there through the use of uh, steps and terraces, intentional use of transparency of the ground floor, uh, to the point where we can manage uh, the transition from grade level up to first floor, existing first floor elevation. Looking at that in elevation, you can see this language of stepped retaining walls, rich and locally inspired materials, including that sort of angular geometry reflected at the ground plane and in the fins and shades above, and transparency at the entry. So you move around to the courtyard, looking at the what we call the gem, so that public convening or um, meeting space sitting within that landscape. Uh, the intent is that we have this sort of lifting uh, expression with geometry sort of inspired by the angularity and expression of the flat irons to reveal that convening space within. Uh, while the workspace within these lighter, smoother stone volumes is more simply expressed, though we have introduced a gradient in the window sizes to create some visual interest and break up with that facade. We hope this is a place that people really enjoy um, daytime and evening time and engage with not just for events, but for uh, recreation, relaxation, reflection, and community engagement. Coming to another important uh, sort of civic presence moment, looking at this new frontage with the Paseo. Uh, so looking west here, west and southish. Um, we've used one of these grounding volumes to really set the edge of Broadway while managing the glazing transparency to the corner to acknowledge that this is an important uh, civic presence, though secondary to the two primary intersections at the courtyard, Alpine and Broadway. Both of those um, sort of more expressive uh, uh, skin systems being seen on the left and right of the image here as sort of guide points to uh, where the primary energy of the building is. Entry on the north side, again, managing grade with retaining walls. So really that convening space and its architectural expression being sort of your, your wayfinding billboard to the civic space and building entry. 
as we come down the Paseo and turn and look to that. Again, we're managing up to existing first floor conditions through the use of integrated landscape seating and planting areas, retaining walls, and associating um, this great civic space with the building entry. So again, trying to create connection, transparency, and openness. Around to the back, if there is a back, though this is a building that is blessed with not having a backside, but it does create the sort of challenges of managing access and services. Uh, so we are reskinning the building entirely, looking at a language, so in the bottom right, existing pavilion architecture, um, using vertical windows as uh, taken from the guidance of the form-based code with express lintels top and bottom, though there is an adjustment in size of those windows as we move up in the building, the fourth floor being the one with the lowest floor to floor height, so that maximize on daylight, trying to take advantage of some larger windows there. You can see the ramping language that is creating our accessible integrated landscape approach, uh, again, meeting that existing grade condition. Form-based code has been a key driver. Um, we feel like we're in pretty good compliance, really good compliance here. Uh, and I'm happy to go into this in more detail as we keep going. Materials are locally and regionally inspired, natural in tone, though uh, punctuated through the use of uh, wayfinding and graphics that are intended to be really vibrant and fun and reflect the um, culture and community of Boulder, balanced by a, a, a very naturally inspired landscape palette. I'll come around the building uh, lastly and say that um, if there is that sort of backside service side, it is against 11th where we have curb managed loading, uh, bike parking, as well as some uh, ingress and egress for uh, building services and bike rooms. Using uh, these two stone volumes to break down the scale at this corner as we shift to the housing projects just behind us out of view here to the west. I'll turn right quickly uh, here and introduce the parking garage, which is intended to work in concert with the pavilion building, uh, setting transparent, uh, inviting in vertical corners, clearly identifying circulation and wayfinding. You can see a change uh, from the existing condition there in the bottom right. I feel like these two buildings are working well in, co in concert um, here at the Broadway intersection both of them creating sort of larger um, aggregated openings of curtain wall or glazing to acknowledge a campus gateway and borrowing uh, through the use of perforated metal panel and other materials to create um, really a, a, a campus feel uh, to the two projects. Really excited about where this is headed. I really look forward to hearing your feedback. So thanks for um, hanging with me as I chug through this and uh, yeah, look, look forward to the discussion. So I'll leave it there. Right. Hopefully I made it under time. You did. Thank you, Justin. Of course. So um, I think we need to also right now see if there are any um, if there's any public participation around the project. So Amanda, are there, is there anybody out there? Yeah, so we just have a few attendees. If anyone would like to speak about this project, um, now's your chance to raise your hand in Zoom. But I think uh, two two of our attendees are part of all of this, so um, I don't see any hands raised. Okay. All right. So um, moving on into the discussion, the DAB discussion, uh, we decided to start with the site review criteria. They're a little more specific, um, and they have to do, I think, primarily with. Uh, looking at the sort of welcoming aspects of the of the project. So the first one uh, under the site review criteria is building siting and public realm interface, and it's focused on the entry. Um, and I think we're looking at both buildings. So um, could we start with a with a graphic that sort of shows the entry, starting so with the pavilion? Yeah, why don't I, would it be all right if I started planning just as a way to sort of orient uh, clearly oh, sure. where that is, and then I yeah. can move to um, either perspective or or elevation. You, you just guide me. I have both the previous submissions as well as the material we just re reviewed. Do we have a Plans. model available? Like a 3D model? Absolutely, yep. Um, in fact, if you'd like, I'm happy to bring that up uh, right now. Yeah, let's let's go to that because that's, that's usually the most helpful for us. Right, yep. 
All right. So in terms of the pavilion, there are two major entries identified um, for the project, one being on Alpine. Bear with me while I get my, hopefully I'm not making anyone seasick while I do this. Um, one on Alpine, which is just to the west of this glazing zone and in a position that lets us meet existing building elevation uh, with a set of stairs uh, that works uh, within the building uh, setbacks and site limitations uh, to bring us up to sort of this break in the building form. And that entry is intended to be uh, well glazed and the landscape interventions uh, part of that sort of architectural expression that brings you up to the building. Let's we'll start there. So we have about 15 minutes to kind of um, talk about this and maybe make some recommendations. So who wants to start? And if you're, I, I would say if, if you're comfortable with this design um, and don't have any particular recommendations, um, we can get through this fairly quickly and then move to the next one. Todd, just can, can you um, tell us which design criteria specifically were? Are we talking about the entries? Or are we talking about the? Yes. Yeah, so this is this is dealing with the building entries. Um, yeah. So I, you know, when I was kind of, um, I mean, I think I think overall that this is like a huge, you know, it's just as a, on a positive note, I think that this is a huge improvement on um, on sort of engaging uh, pedestrians in the community and the traffic that's going down Broadway and um, just in general, both, I think both the pavilion space and the garage um, is just a huge improvement. But I do, when I was looking at the floor plans, of the pavilion specifically, I, I was um, trying to create or, or trying to kind of identify the all the entries that are in this building. And like you said, that there's not um, there there are quite a few entries, and there's there's um, maybe a lack of hierarchy in these entries. And I think um, by just stating that the entry on the north to the Paseo is the primary entry, I think is um, maybe not the, in my mind, the most logical place to enter this building. Um, maybe programmatically it needs to be um, on the north side, but I am guessing that most people, you know, whether they're coming off the bus on Broadway or they're coming from the parking garage, that they're going to be going um, on through onto that you know, what's sort of considered a secondary entrance on that south side um, of the building. So okay. I just, I, I think- So Brendan, you're talking about the pavilion, right? Yes. So the isn't the entry is on the south side, isn't it? There are two, we would call two primary entries. Okay. Um, and and one of those is here indicated against um, on, on Alpine and is intended to have a dialogue. I, I don't know if this plan cut helps a little bit, I'm happy to go to, to the, the, the other views as well, uh, but that is intended to have a relationship with the parking crosswalk and that uh, flow of people coming from that side of the street. We anticipate that's probably a pretty well used, if not the main use entry, given that parking is to the south. That said, there is a second, um, and I would still say primary entry, given uh, the the development of this, the, I think it's called the super bus stop or the bus stop at the end of the Paseo uh, that will bring people up the Paseo and into uh, an entry facing north. Those two entries are linked in the space, visually connected through the building. So if that helps just clarify where those two points are, um, please, I'm very interested in your, in your feedback on that. Yeah, so, you know, when you're driving down Broadway, I think that corner where your cursor is right now is not, is not as um, visually interesting or or um, like a corner feature element, and I so one of the recommendations I think in the from planning staff was to create um, better wayfinding to that north entry, um, 
I, I, I'm just not sure. I don't know. I just want the south entry to be the entry, <laughs> the primary entry, and you have that corner glass feature element that is that is your wayfinding. Yeah. It is your guiding, um, and I just think that that north entry is is would need a lot of um, maybe signage or landscaping or, but architecturally, I think it's not as um, prominent of a of a of a guide to where the entrance needs to be. There's that, for reference, there's that view looking down the paseo, and then uh, juxtaposed against the view looking the now, Brendan, uh, Broadway point. Just for clarification, you're saying that the south entry feels like the main entry because of the parking. Um, and if the north entry is the is the primary entry, you feel like there needs to be more wayfinding for that entry? Uh, or we just abandon the idea that that's the primary and, and say that the south entry is the primary. <laughs> right. Uh, if I can just chime in, I just have two comments and they're, they're related. So hopefully it can inform the discussion. I think the south entry um, in terms of wayfinding, the sort of geometry of the gallery um, having a lot of transparency it does tend to work um, as a uh, the south entrance uh, again i just in the current condition that also feels like the primary entrance to me um, because it, it, this is similar to what we're discussing is i i'm just having trouble at the moment imagining that paseo the north side being very activated um, I'm not sure what is pulling people through the site east to west. In other words, I'm not quite sure what is west of the development. Um, but I, um, I'm trying to imagine how that Paseo is going to be, you know, as populated as we'd want it to be or activated unless there's an active event going on of some kind. And in that sense, it, it feels ultimately as a secondary um, entrance, just because I, I don't see people transiting the full site east to west, um, given the program to the west. Yeah, and with that said, there's an additional west vest vestibule entry going into that multi-purpose space, which is like a double height. You go in, you know, it's, it's also pretty prominent. Um, you know, you could argue that that's maybe the secondary exit and then that north vestibule wants to be the tertiary. And in which case I think like landscape and architecturally that north vestibule needs to sort of have like a tertiary feel to the ex to the entry. But all that said, not to muddy the waters, um, but I also want to acknowledge, you know, the team's dealing with an existing building geometry. And so I would say, you know, exploiting that inside corner to create the pavilion, those are strong moves. Um, extending the building to the west to get the program square footage, all of those seem like necessary moves. So I do appreciate that in addition to just plugging in those empty spaces, there is really nice landscape design, a lot of thought put into the circulation. So just want to, you know, temper my comments with an acknowledgement that I, I wouldn't discount the attempt to create an open sort of circulation and, and access to the whole program. Rory? Yeah, I think it's tricky because I tend to agree. I mean, I had the benefit of sitting on a very early multi-board sort of envisioning of this site five or six years ago. So it's kind of interesting to kind of see how it went from sort of pie in the sky to pretty legitimate uh, design development here. And I, I think I'm struggling with the concept of the Paseo as well, just because it, it kind of barely touches to the West Matthew uh, North Boulder Park. Right. And so like, that's kind of the, 
the argument, I guess, is that it's it's kind of creating a link from North Boulder Park, but then to what? It kind of just terminates head on into the edge of Broadway, which is not a very pedestrian friendly location uh, where it's terminating. Now it does sound like there's some sort of super bus station or something that's gonna be there. So maybe we're, we're generating a place for this to terminate. And then ultimately, I guess, you know, as we continue to evaluate the success of uh, tran the transit center and, and other developments that are doing these kind of wound roof concepts, uh, you know, there's a ton of residential that's eventually coming in here that in theory will engage this paseo in a way that might create some of that energy that I tend to agree, at least at this point, feels hard to imagine. Um, but the goal is to encourage it, I suppose, uh, and, and you know, the bodies in the buildings will eventually maybe allow for that. And, you know, you imagine a world where there's a ton of folks coming in and out of this civic building uh, and, you know, having lunch in the park or, you know, whatever it may be and, and, and activating this Paseo. So I guess I don't want to dismiss that we that this Paseo couldn't have a celebrated connection, particularly to North Boulder Park, because it's a pretty sweet park over there. Um, I guess with the entry questions, I'm kind of just reading through the detailed agenda notes, um, specifically just kind of looking at a building entry should be emphasized by architectural features, right? And, and are they doing a good enough, is, does this design do a good enough job of emphasizing the entries, uh, particularly, you know, from the public realm? Uh, and I guess the question I'm hearing my cohorts debate here is whether or not we need multiple entries. And I guess I'm not necessarily questioning that, that I mean, there's going to be an egress. This is a large occupant building. Like, there's going to be egress requirements. There's going to, there's got to be a lot of you know porosity through the skin of this building, and to encourage multiple access points to me it is not a bad thing. I don't think. And so, I guess for me, what's more important is can we spend some of the architectural detailed dollars, if you will, that are clearly hyper focused on this southeast corner and thread them to the north, to the west, like wherever you want to identify entry, what in your mind identifies entry? Is Because right now it just feels like the site plan and stairs. Is there more architectural detail? Is it the fins? Is it the, is there some sort of canopy that's consistent? Is there a landscape move like Brendan was suggesting that's out towards Broadway, but brings some of those perforated, you know, whatever is an identifying entry monument out to the sidewalk, even though it's not attached to the building in a way that very quickly we understand these are the beacons of entry based on the architectural detailing. And I think it could be quite simple. And I wonder too, programmatically looking at the plan, um, like if they're, because, because part of the program is for public use um, and part of the plan is for um, you know, city staff or uh, off, you know, more office space. That's city services. City services. It's a little more private. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if programmatically, you know, one of the entrances could be kind of uh, designated, like enter here for you know public services, and the other entry could be um, clarified as being more of a like. Paseo um, progression to your office space, and it's more of a private office entry. I don't know a way of distinguishing, you know, where you where you want to direct the public to enter into this building, unless the intent is for them to just be able to uh, for it to be porous and just be able to circulate and enter enter wherever. Yeah, that's a great question as far as like, are there security concerns? I think what you've done well here is that all of the entry points essentially lead to these thoroughways. So it's like, it's a central arrival point regardless of the entry. And I'm assuming obviously that's intentional. And then as, as long as we're quelling security concerns because in Boulder, as is probably similar in Portland, public realm and civic buildings tend to attract um, vagrancy. So, you know, this North Courtyard, as beautiful as it's rendered, may have uh, quite a few different looking characters in reality. So going back to the South entrance, I think one of the first comments was that the South entrance appears to want to be the main entrance. 
because of the proximity to the parking garage and which is where most of the how most of the access is generated and i think that the south east corner kind of angular feature um cantilevered uh transparent i mean it's like a little jewel right there <laughs> we call it the gem yes gem yeah so, so is there, <laughs> is there are, are there ways to to make the south entrance more welcoming or or brendan are you suggesting that it, it already is well my understanding is that if if we're trying to call out the north as the being the primary entry it needs mm -hmm. better wayfinding but i think that that should be flipped and just that the south entry has the wayfinding and i i think it has all the necessary elements right okay so kind of wrapping up here what would what would our recommendations be then if any And you swing, so you are using, Justin, on the north entry, you still have some of this, you, you've repopulated this sort of perforated screen elements and things yeah. that kind of, yeah. again, sort of dress with yeah. signage as sort of highlighted entry point. Yeah, that, that's correct. And and the, the, the intent, and you know, it, this feedback is great, right? A, a diagram is, is one thing. Um, but the intent is that these gems, as we call them, sort of the, the glowy things here, do have this unique and, and bespoke sort of geometry and express, expression, both using the, te the texture of the, the sun fins, at least on the southeast, and the use of transparency. So when there is entry, what we're trying to do is combine both that language of those folded planes and the volume of civic space, so here on the south east the gallery with the entry point and that becomes part of the wayfinding condition now um, i'll swing around to the other side I, I apologize i lost the model without the plan cut i can relaunch that but it'll take me just a moment um, so on the south the use of grade management the use of transparency at the entries a break in the building mass the use of a canopy and then these sort of fins are the are the the um, composition that is intended to, to provide that wayfinding. As we spin around to the north, we'll start you know, here from the Paseo view. Again, those fins on this, the, the multi-purpose volume are intended to be visible as part of that wayfinding strategy, right? They're kind of the identifiable volume or thing. And then as we work into that space, again, um, the use of those sort of fins as part of the architectural wayfinding, the use of canopy, the use of transparency, and the combining of that with that civic or public uh, volumetric space, the activity that happens within. If that helps sort of at least give you a sense what the, the components we're trying to deploy are. Yeah, the architectural detail. I mean, it's consistent. I think what I tend to agree with Brendan on is that when you're headed southbound on Broadway, this and like this acknowledge like yeah this view this acknowledgement of entry is so distant and it's arguably two sided like that gem uh, that northwestern gem is multifaceted and only one component uh, only one edge of it is actually entry so I think it's it's a little liberal to say that the gem itself signifies entry because it's actually a mass of a ton of program that is not entry and so what I'm trying to I, I really like the uh, architectural language the detail for these. And I'm wondering if it's as simple as bringing elements that may not even be attached to the building. They may be, you know, street furniture mm. if it, if you will, that somehow create a threshold at this corner at the public way that makes it much more obvious. Yeah, I don't know what these blue boxes are, but just trying to kind of track what I think I, I hear. Are there fragments of that? that totally. That, yeah. Can you like leave a landscape? trail of breadcrumbs? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, is there a trail of breadcrumbs that yeah. kind of makes this a little more obvious? And then I think semantically, I don't like, I guess, Brendan, I'm trying to resolve your, so we can move to the next one, but is it just because they're calling the North entry, the main entry is because like, to me, it's like, yeah, vehicularly, if you put it into Google, like into Google maps and direct yourself in a vehicle, you're going to park in that parking garage and you're going to have easy way find to this Southern access. If you ride your bike to work every day in the summer, I don't know where the bike parking is. I hope it's off this plaza because that's a great way to invite a bunch of people to kind of 
activate that plaza. I'm assuming you're going to enter from the north if you're not coming in a vehicle, uh, potentially, and if you're coming from the north. So I guess I don't want to get hung up on like, I, I, I mean, to me, I agree that the south entry feels like the main point of entry that most people will likely use in a post-occupancy study. But that doesn't, to me, neg negate the need for a north entry or a beautiful north entry if we're going to try to encourage a future activation of the Paseo. Yeah, so Rory, I'm just looking at the architectural site plan uh, in our packet, and there's a big red arrow that says principal entry, uh, and it's pointing to the north. So that's just got that, it. Yeah. yeah. So that's where I'm getting that. Got it. Like, yeah, just make the one on the south red, Justin. <laughs> yeah. So that I think that's that's my recommendation is that um, is that either we acknowledge that the south entry is, is yeah feels more like the primary entrance yeah. um and it's really just a matter of changing the arrow on the site yeah. plan <laughs> yeah i i will um I, I i hear that i hear that feedback right it's 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 um it's clearly marked that way here and i'll just um acknowledge that one thing the form based code does ask for is it defines the paseo as the a frontage which by that code definition asks for the quote the quote unquote semantics aside right to be defined as the or a main entry i would i would posit that both of these entries are important you're going to see the most day-to-day -day use people coming to the customer service programs and other things on the south because of its adjacency to parking and so there's there's a little bit of um language here that's actually um, reacting to how the form-based code is asking for us to define it as opposed to how we're imagining the use and, I, and I'm not trying to put that back on the code, just explain why this red arrow is here. Yeah. So the recommendation is to flip the arrows then. Yeah, pretty straightforward. And I'm still a fan of like a trail of breadcrumbs in the public way that just kind of makes that entry a little more available and not down an alley yeah. paseo. Understood, yeah. And I I, I know you, we, we, you, you'll want to move on, but one piece we, we're not, getting into here because we haven't pushed it through design far enough, but there's signage components, right? And we've started to talk about those as having potentially a language that is related to these sort of um, angular fins or things that are sort of defining characteristics of the architecture. And I think that could very easily answer some of that feedback if that's uh, right. something of interest. Yeah, and I think it needs uh, just the last piece of that is that um, it needs to be visible from broad from Broadway. Yeah. Understood. So, Rory, when you're talking about the trail of breadcrumbs, are you talking about both the north and south entrances, or maybe... no? I think south is available because the the corner, yeah. the gem is is visible from the corner. So more I than think. north. Yeah. So the northeast, uh, the northeast corner should kind of uh, propagate okay. more entry detail yeah. to the public realm. Okay. So I'm probably get later on going to ask you to be more specific about trail of breadcrumbs. Uh, propagate so the, more architectural de entry detail to the public realm. Okay. Maybe we drop the breadcrumb uh, <laughs> moniker like, for I him. like the uh, analogy, but... Um... Thank you for that. That's really constructive and insightful uh, feedback and reaction. Okay. So move, So if you if you guys are ready, we'll move on to the second one. Um, we're a little bit behind on that one, but not too badly. So the second one is uh, building design, um, and it re it refers to windows. Uh, windows create visual interest, um, connection to the public realm, and transparency. The kind of the main concept. Yeah, I'm trying to determine, Kailani, is there which facades are questionable as far as the, percentage the parking. The, parking Sorry, say that again. Along, the parking garage along broadway got it and so it may be that um because it's an existing building you'll review with the applicant um the constraints so it may be that the visual it, it can't be you know glass but there may be other architectural decent like at the ground plane there that helps to meet that site review criteria for visual interest on the pedestrian realm. 
Yeah, I was generally I didn't want to open this can of worms and I'm going to I'm going to save it till the end. But just in case any other dad member has the same thought, like I'm. I think it's a missed opportunity to not figure out how to preserve and or embellish the existing sort of retail that populates here, especially as we're going to continue to make this a nicer place to be. Um, but that's more of a planning board issue, I suppose, uh, as far as use of this building and the different plates. But that very clearly would have kind of led led the horse to water as far as activating this facade, because uh, it's currently it's activated with, uh, you know, kind of retail and, and struggling F&B stuff. So before we move on to the next item, um, are there any uh, issues around the entrance to the parking garage? Since we're talking about entrances. Kalani, was that, is that something that was on your radar? No, it was primarily the pavilion building um, right. because of the assortment of entries, the hierarchy of entries, some of the grades, and then just identifying, you know, what is the primary one if there were the breadcrumbs around these right. other ones that were. Used. Okay. So we'll move on to um, the breadcrumbs. <laughs> but, but obviously, like, obviously, do you have more, if you have some recommendations for those? Parking structures, parking structure entries. We didn't want to keep you from looking at those, but we picked out the ones that were the most um, prevalent right. for us. And and okay. from a staff perspective on urban design, we were looking at it from walking speed, driving, you know, and on a bike. So imagining that the areas around the building were also going to be activated once the full development came online. Right. Can we look at the Broadway renderings of this parking garage. You can. Um, well, that model reloads. I'm going to give you the stills, but I am stills are I'm good, working. Yeah. I'm working on it on the digital. So it's interesting because technically we're probably meeting the transparency requirement. Technically, just metrically, it's just a matter of is the expression of it. Bro, are you talking about windows now? Well, yeah, I'm on the second. You know, they're basically talking right. about windows create visual interest and transparency, and they're talking about best practice i guess so kailani just so i'm understanding the comment it's really the 60 percent of the ground floor that's the issue here the 20 percent moving up you know you could argue is 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 easily maintained because it's an open parking garage so we're just looking at yeah you know arguably an 80 percent opaque ground level yes and what's what is happening is, in that ground level yeah exactly that's what I'm no. now. um so yeah so if you're it, if you look at the floor plans in our packet, like the Arcan. the architectural site plan um, is, this is just a suggestion for future dab submittals or, or whatever, but there's no, um, the site plan has north oriented up the page. And then on the next uh, few plans, there's no north arrow and it's rotated and it's it took me a minute to kind of figure out um, where we're, where we're, how it, how it relates to that site plan. Um, but if you're looking at it, it's just programmatically, it's just the same parking, you know, that you see kind of along Broadway anyway. Um, and I, and I would argue that I don't necessarily, um, you know, like the parking on Walnut and, 11th um, is sort of has those half those low half walls you know, stone masonry half walls or whatever and then it's like a a balcony or a, a um, rail height and then you can see into the parking I don't necessarily need to see into the um, I don't need to have full transparency into that parking so I don't I don't think um, I, I I don't think it's it needs the full, you know, I think 20% maybe is okay. It does have a big, like, plinth, um, very heavy base feel for if you were talking about human scale and somebody walking um, on a pedestrian level. So, but there's so much landscaping in front of it. And I, and that's the way it currently is as well. And I don't think I've ever noticed how, 
opaque it, it is. It's not, it's not. Right now, there's a noodle joint that you can walk in. It's like a super narrow. And then there's like an ATM vestibule. And then there's some sort of community space on the corner. They're actually removing oh. trade access retail. I My office used to be right across the street. Now, I didn't frequent the noodle joint. You know, I don't know if it's the result of the urban design or the quality of the noodles, but it's, I, I'm confused. When we talked about this site at a high program level five, six years ago, they were talking about like, do we even need parking? Like everyone's going to be, you know, in self-driving cars that pick you up. And like, they were like really forward thinking and, you know, somewhat kind of sci-fi, but to, to kind of unwind all the way back to actually removing existing street activating program. And, and I hear the argument that it's offsetting parking for elsewhere on the site and et cetera, et cetera. But this is Broadway. This is a main thoroughfare. So I'm I'm still kind of confused. And I think this is an opportunity to kind of tear open a seam using the transparency credential to kind of ask the question programmatically, do we have any opportunity to actually express a program in here that we want to be transparent? Because right now I'm under the impression it's just parking beyond these walls. And one more thing. So that helps clarify I was I, I was also wondering what happened to the that low retail. I didn't actually. I just looked at Google. I realize now it's like a one-story kind of well, saddlebag those, retail. Those retails were used that much. I mean, it was well, a. It was I guess a my Been my there. question for the applicant is if that's being removed. What is there anything going in its place, or is that just a further landscape setback? No, I think it's the, parking. From the sidewalk. I think they're consuming it from the interior as parking. that's that's correct it's it is being consumed as, as parking and jeff i'll let you lean in for for further um like what about the corner like, somebody kailani you mentioned maybe there was like a community space i'm having trouble there's so many documents guys so bear with us but yeah. is the corner like a community room or something is there any anything on this site within the yeah. existing structure that is a heated yeah. envelope for gathering so I, I'd ask the applicant because the, the, the drawings do indicate um, it looks like there might be um, police substation on the south corner, anchoring that corner, and then whatever is going out the north corner. So if you could explain how you might be activating those spaces. Happy to. Rory, Brendan, good to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you're all correct. The existing... The exist, existing parking structure actually has a noodle, a uh, Chinese you know, restaurant in the southeast corner. Uh, in the northeast corner right now, it's a bank. Um, so it has uh, you know, very little pedestrian activity, uh, but there is a bank uh, office space in there. Um, and then you'll, if you look at the street view on Google, what you'll see is actually an extension of the glass facade from those spaces uh, toward the center of the building. And those are oh, only- On the north? You're talking about on the north? Uh, it's actually on the, well, it's partially on the north and it's primarily on the east side facing Broadway. Yeah. There's actually um, only about a three or four, in some cases, five foot wide glazed space uh, on the first floor. That extends up, I want to say, you know, 40 feet beyond each of the usable spaces. They've tried to activate it by, you know, shoving in small tables. There's actually a set of stairs on the south side. Um, so it it doesn't it doesn't actually function as a as a, um, a reasonable retail space in about you know 50 percent of the space that's there with um, that's shown with glazing. So um, the actual restaurant is focused in this corner right there, the uh, flower pepper. <clears throat> There's actually only one bay that's wide enough uh, to actually allow a kitchen and then a counter. And then they try to squeeze in some, some tables that run up to the north there where the, the cursor is. And that extends a couple of you know bays to the north. Um, and then on the on, on the north side, you've got one bay of... Real quick, Jeff, before you leave this flower pepper, like, I don't know, am I off 
space here. Like to me, like if we're getting the opportunity to reskin this building and we have some like micro funky restaurant space, like aren't those like the epic destinations and urban environments that like have the cute little four seats, like super tapas. Like, I don't think the size and shape of it is would suggest a failure of use. I think it's the business model and the menu. Well, I would maybe argue, Rory, it's actually the location that's the problem because there's very little pedestrian traffic in the center of this block. But Most we're about to build a massive- pedestrian traffic is actually on Alpine and Broadway. We're about to build a 250 plus person office building directly north of it. Yes, I hear what you're saying, right but it's still mid block. It's still mid block and we have plenty of retail spaces scattered throughout Boulder that don't function very well in mid block conditions. So uh, I hear you, we're bringing a lot of people in here, but I also wanna emphasize the fact that there is a significant lack of supply of parking for all of the uses that are proposed uh, north of Alpine. We've got hundreds of residential so units and we've got you know uh, tens of thousands of square feet of office space in, uh, in the north side of Alpine here that are only served, I shouldn't say only, but the vast majority, 97% of the parking is focused on this, on this parking structure. So the city's point of view is that the parking is more valuable than these small retail spaces that haven't functioned very well over a long period of time. So our, our perspective, and we'd love your feedback on this, is maybe a treatment of more artistic, uh, you know, stonework on the base, potentially some, some interesting artwork, some enhanced landscaping near these entry points, rather than, you know, creating these kind of retail spaces. And I will say that the Northeast corner will remain and, and actually is being sort of transitioned into a primary entry for the parking structure. So it was a bank, which has very little pedestrian traffic. It will now have uh, a significant portion of pedestrian traffic entering the parking structure now. So I think that's actually going to improve the activity um, at the corner of Alpine and Broadway. So I, I hear your, I hear your, your point about the retail space. And um, I, think, I appreciate that perspective. Balance the parking needs for all of these uses with the viability of a 400 square foot retail space in the parking structure. I can't make that decision, but I can tell you what the city's position is in terms of the priorities. No, it makes sense. And I appreciate that um, background and history. Again, it's just interesting to me because I have like a six year time jump with it where they were talking about like Waymo dropping you off here and there, were, well, there wasn't, they're going to turn this into housing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like with ramp, you know, floors in the house. So it's very different that we've gone actually, we've consumed more parking. Um, and, you know, some of that's the fault of a larger master plan, in my opinion, that you're going to like this one bay of parking, these 12 spots on Broadway are somehow like more important than when we have the opportunity to fresh eyes this entire master plan. So like, I don't know, I'm not really buying the, the 12 spaces that we've consumed here is, is justifying the means of creating what could become a very active corridor, particularly with an anchor tenant like the Civic use uh, Anthem Branding or whoever's in that building down there now. I mean, th this is, you know, this is a very active with Whole Foods across the street. I mean, if it, if there were destinations that were worthy of arriving at, people would go there. But back to the code section, I guess it's about creating visual interest and transparency. It's not about programming it as retail or food and beverage. And I guess, you know, I, I appreciate this idea of potentially, you know, articulating the facade in a way that's more graphic that kind of alludes maybe to kind of window penetration and things. I'm also wondering, is there a way to just provide almost like storefront sort of shopping windows that become art installation where you're actually literally meeting the transparency criteria with a 30 inch deep display that's like on rotation with community artists 
that's epic and lit at night and something interesting to walk by instead of like a different color brick every three feet and actually provide safety because there's light. And you see what I'm saying? Like you can achieve that transparency, I think, and create like a wonderful opportunity to make it like a community engagement piece. So, uh, yeah. I think that's a great idea, Rory. Uh, sorry, Brendan, I was just gonna, I, I think that's exactly what the, the kind of feedback that we're looking for here is that, I think that idea of, of creating sort of an art gallery on the street, you know, facing facade would be spectacular in that area. And I think that's a really interesting idea that we could explore. So I think I'm okay with, we have such a commercial hub right across the street with um, Santos and, you know, restaurants and liquor stores and um, Whole Foods and uh, that I- Ice well, cream. I, I do think that's a, um, a fun little restaurant and I actually do like their food, <laughs> but I, but I don't think as a dab we're here necessarily to reprogram this garage because I, that's necessary. Um, but I, I wonder if the a recommendation might be to sort of keep the grounding plane of that um, stone base but you have all the elements, Rory, that that we were that you were just suggesting of sort of the um, the glass and the the storefront elements and sort of the um, uh, the permeable uh, metal or the metal mesh or whatever that material is is sort of in set in that um, store frame. If can you zoom in on that elevation a little bit? Um, and just maybe bringing that whole language down, you know, so that it's three feet off the ground instead of, you know, a full story so that you're just getting the base grounding element and then you're you're getting the transparency um, and the language that's already there. It's just a little high up and then it'll give it a little more of a human scale and, get, you know, if you're walking past that Anthem building, which um, I was surprised to see that wasn't as one of the kind of precedent um, projects or buildings in proximity to this, because this design on both the pavilion and the garage, I think, um, ties in nicely with the existing architecture there. But if you're walking down, you know, you have this sort of private office, and then you're walking by a, you know, a, a garage with a facade with absolutely no public engagement, um, you know, to get to this pavilion building. I think that uh, I do agree that architecturally something needs to happen um, to give it some human scale, you know, for the pedestrian experience. It could be epic. I mean, you can have these things go up two, three stories and they could be transparent on both sides. Like getting out of your car, you're like experiencing one side of it and they don't need to be big these things can be 12 inches deep they're like little shadow box art exhibits or something of that nature that again is kind of like a, a tricky way of of literally meeting the transparency requirement even though the depth of it is so shallow to preserve the parking consumption but still activate the street i think those are i love how you're getting all fired up rory i love that um i think that's a great idea and brendan i think I think your idea of maybe lowering the frame and that facade treatment so that it feels a little less um, like it's been elevated above the street, but kind of participates at the street level. So some of those, you know, more intricate detailed materials can kind of come down and, and sort of interface with the stone base, I think is a, is a great idea. And we can, it's a little bit like what's happening more at the center of the building, Brendan, right? over to the left side where that base has been kind of compressed a bit because of the sloping of the of the street. So we can definitely look at the proportions of that base with the frame, as I kind of call it, um, that's, you know, pitched up above there. So I think those are great ideas and, and we'll continue to explore that. Yeah, I mean, I saw that that dropped in, in height as you're going south, but I, but I mean like sill height or, you know, um, something that's yeah. a little more relatable. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. Yeah, I, okay. the problem um, is, is you don't want to open up that facade and, and stare at basically headlights and um, 
you know, license plates. Definitely not. So do we want to spend more time on the pavilion building talking about this particular issue? I'm, I'm I don't think, I don't think this is an issue so on, the on the parking garage, but. Is it, Kailani, my understanding was this is directed particularly at this facade we've been focused on. It is primarily at the parking structure, but if okay. the board feels like there's other areas you want to take a spin through the model on the pavilion and double check for transparency, please, we um, we have um, opportunities to also take recommendations on that. We we need we need to move on to the third uh, issue as well, and we and, still have a fourth one. Yeah, and I will say too that we programmed in time for open discussion at the end of the like about twenty minutes. Mm -hmm. If you want to wrap back around on on anything that you felt um, staff did not right. identify. Well, let's move on to the third one then. So the third one is building design is more materials, color, reform, style. Um, and I assume we're talking about, in this case, about both buildings. Are there... Um, is that a question for me, Todd? No, it's for, it's for Deb unless you want to clarify this particular point. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, again, Kalani, for efficiency, if you've got a, a headlight you want to focus as far as relative to the source of this comment. You might be muted. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm muted. <laughs> so in particular, this one is specifically referencing the area plan. So they're in the site review criteria, what happens is it, it links you back to any approved area plans. This particular area plan, um, the Alpine Balsam area plan, talks about welcoming public buildings. And that was what that site review criteria, why it so, was identified, is to take a look at these buildings um, at, the, at the area plan level and at the public use level. And um, it's, it's the board's chance to take a look at it from a community perspective on the welcoming nature, because there are public uses in here outside of staff. So Kalani, we're, we're on the building design. Um, so I'm a little yeah. confused about the area. Oh. Plan, yeah, we're, we're talking about material and character. Is there anything in particular? I think, I mean, it looks like Colorado buff. My, my apologies. Well, it's a, the consistent with the character in adopted area plans or guidelines. And so that's that's the one where we wanted to make sure that this the design of this building, the materials, the color, the group form or the style meets the intent for the area plan of the of that it kind of looks like a public building, it feels like a public building, and that the board got a chance to weigh in. And if it, it could be that it it does and the board um appreciates the design as it is or it could be that you have some suggestions on the public nature of the building and some of the style and the design that might help communicate more of the public use i mean i love when people reuse all the old pig stone in boulder and do it in a way that looks fresh with like new glazing and and structural technology i just think that there that's a clear fabric of civic and institutional buildings in this okay. town, in this city. Um, I think looking at, if I, I'll just, this is my really, my only comment. I, I actually, I really like the project. This is an incredible project, guys. I know we're here to kind of throw darts at the things we don't like, but I think it's important to remind ourselves, this is a fantastic contribution. And I know Brendan, you mentioned that earlier. Um, I just want to reiterate that. I'm, I'm really stoked to see this come together. Is there a little bit more sharing between the two? Like, Again, I don't want to, you know, spend the dollars where they don't necessarily make sense, but we're we're playing pretty hard into this like entry needs to be detailed in a way and and maybe the parking structure deserves a little bit of that treatment and particularly if we're going to kind of skirt some of the maybe transparency and activation along Broadway, uh can we embellish that corner a little bit more and pull some of those screens or whatever it may be across the site here so that you further that sort of campus 
rhetoric that you were spitting earlier, Justin, uh, and then also just kind of further uh, the, the design guidelines, trying to kind of articulate these entries in a way that creates uniformity and consistency. I, I think there's there's certainly opportunity to do that. We, we have, to, to your comment, been trying to be judicious in how we, how we spend the resources, but um, I think within the context of welcoming and engaging ground plane, I mean, I'd invite Jeff to react as it as it relates to the garage, but um, I think that's that's a really strong thought. Like this, almost, like Alpine to me, like turning off a of Broadway, like I want to feel like I'm going into a threshold where like the two buildings yeah. are bookending, like a welcome to the heart of the Civic Center, and there's a beautiful park at the end of the perspective. You know what I mean? Like, and you're getting there. I just think it could you could share a little bit to the south yeah and what we tried to do rory is pull that um that metal uh, panel expression cross into more of the facade so that pavilion kind of took precedence right there's a little bit of prioritizing here because we also don't want the parking structure to distract from the public nature of the pavilion even though we know it's sort of the foyer right everybody's going to drive into the parking structure they're going to land there, and then they're going to walk across the street and then enter the pavilion. And so it wants to be the, you know, the little sister um, to the pavilion, um, yeah. not, you know, distract too much from it. So we tried to pull some of that, some of the same materials in, while also, you know, not as I think, you know, Justin's comment was a great one, be judicious with the use of the resources, right? where, you know, um, they'll have the greatest impact on both guests and, um, and staff in the building. So um, I like your idea. Um, it's come, you know, it's certainly been a thought of mine to maybe pull that, that screen system across uh, Alpine to the corner, you know, northeast corner of the parking structure. But I also wonder, and I'd be interested in Dab's feedback on this, if maybe just integrating it into the facade in a more subtle way, maybe less um, dynamic so that the pavilion gets an opportunity to really shine at the intersection, but there's this interesting use of similar materials without emulating it um, too dramatically might be a more subtle approach. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, I, mean, I think it could be a simple- needs to be like definitely a hierarchy of this parking garage is, like you said, the little sister. And I, I think that this accomplishes it. And going back to that, to the um, design, the building's design as a whole within this campus or the site, um, you know, both of these buildings are kind of completely maxing out on, especially on their massing on their, the height of the buildings. I'm sure they're um, the pavilion, especially, um, I kind of wonder if the garage needs to have that roof element to make it max out this, the height, um, or if it could, if it would help kind of with some more, more of a feeling of it stepping down. And, um, I, I just wonder if, you know, you're sitting at, at the coffee shop across the parking lot and you're like mad that you're part of your views are blocked because of this architectural feature that unless it's for shading um i'm not i'm not sure uh, well, but in terms of like maxing out on this site and making sure that the um that these buildings are have a civic feel and you know i i these two these gems that are kind of at the corners i think that you've this project has definitely accomplished all that what i think is going to be the challenge for um, for the future development is the residential component of this, that that is going to, you know, those residential uh, buildings are going to have to um, be designed in a way that um, is, is not, is not, in the, you know, even remotely in the same language of this civic use building. Um, that it's, you know, programmatically, there's a lot happening on this campus. And a lot of it, if a lot of it is residential, it, I just think you're going to have to um, take care of the residential component to, to make sure that these are sort of stay as a featured um, 
a, you know, civic public building and that the residential, the architecture feels like residential architecture. Yeah, well, and, and to maybe um, going back to your comment about the the sort of roof uh, extension, um, we actually looked at it without that component. And 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 to be honest, the the stairs are going to be enclosed, and and so those stair elements on the corners are actually going to uh, take the building to this height. And the idea behind this extension um, to the right and left of the corners is really to just tie the building together because it's just a lot of ribbons of concrete, right? And so the, the concept was to try to tie the massing of the, of the parking structure back a little bit more to the massing of the pavilion. So it didn't feel like a series of these vertical elements you know, with these adjacent horizontal volumes that didn't quite mesh with the very civic, powerful massing of the pavilion, right? And what these do when you're, you know, walking around the building is they kind of create a more volumetric expression for a parking structure that you wouldn't get otherwise. Otherwise, you would have at these corners, these glass towers with these kinds of lower, um, you know, volumes for the parking deck. I hear what you're saying. And, and we actually looked at it both ways and we felt like this expression tied back a little bit um, more appropriately to the massing of the pavilion than not. But we could certainly look at it again if the board feels strongly about it. I, 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 I think it does, it, it achieves everything you just described. I think it, it yeah. takes like a whole garble of existing pile of stuff <laughs> and efficiently unifies it and also kind of creates the scale that I think, you know, in these sites, uh, these downtown sites, these urban sites, like we want at least to kind of express the density that they sh deserve. And if this particular building is better left uh, kept, uh, at least we're kind of achieving sort of that density of this is an urban, this is like the urban core. Um, so we've got some sort of presence on the street. So I, I'm less concerned there. Uh, but back to just, again, the comment with the architectural detailing and the material usage, I don't think it needs to like try to, I guess I'm not advocating for um, creating ambiguity as far as wh who's the head honcho here and where's the entry. I just think something as simple as potentially folding the plane uh, once or an angled installation on the mesh components that make it over that they actually, you know, so that they feel like they kind of received one more level of the articulation, but not quite. And I think it's that simple. Like they could open up like gills and they could still be flat and just installed in a way that they kind of open like gills or something, but just to kind of create, cause they, I, you also don't want to like see that material used so um, exceptionally and sort of like, embodied with movement and then all of a sudden that same material is just flat on a wall right it kind so, of cheapens I, I Rory sorry to interrupt but I wish I had my SketchUp model because that's act, exactly the way we originally designed it. it was almost like a vertical louver system so that the transparency you know as you move past it changes right it's more opaque in some angles and it's less opaque almost in, entirely transparent from other angles um we will go back to that. I think that's a really strong. And, and I think like Brendan was saying earlier, people, someone's going to experience that at 40 miles an hour, which is going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, you're going to get this interesting, you know, sort of cadence as you, as you drive past it, that'll be really cool. So we'll, we'll revisit that. I think that's a strong comment. Thank Jeff, you. I was wondering um, in Justin's uh, introductory introduction, um, one of the slides said that the, parking garage was six floors, six stories. And he said, that's, that can't be right. Two levels down, four if, up. They're what? Two levels down, four up. It's six total floors. So is, so is the building above ground l higher than the existing structure? Uh, 
is the is does the new building? No, we're not adding like another. Uh, you're just reskinning it, but you're not adding anything on. Correct. It. Yes. Okay. Hopefully that explains what you're asking. Yeah, because I there is a there is a view there. There's not much of a view there, but there is a view there because right across the street from the parking structure is basically where you would sit outside in this block, in this particular block. Correct. Yeah, all the yeah. Mo's frontage and, and oh, right, that's I see all what you're saying. Over from that's Mo's. the main yeah. seating is there. Yeah, yeah. Over from Mo's, yeah. It's um, it's it's not going to be. The height isn't going to be increased except at the corners where we need to enclose the stairs okay. because the, the problem is, is right now the stairs are falling off the building. Um, yeah. they, they were left exterior. Um, and the primary goal behind this project is to enclose those stairs and make them, you know, more structurally sound and give them some longevity um, that they don't have today. Right. Okay. So other other comments or recommendations from from Dab sort of generally generally or specific to this criteria. <laughs> well, we've sort of bled over into this uh, um, open discussion about the uh, the la the last item, which is the um, area plan. Yeah, I think. Number three, we were talking about kind of compatibility with the character of the area and, and kind of consistency and material use and forms and stuff. Right. And I think we did a good job covering that. I don't know if Matthew, you had anything you wanted to add to that? No, I mean, I, I think my my feelings are tracking with that same discussion. Okay. So then the, the next is this, Area plan local government services, basically creating a centralized local government customer hub that feels safe, efficient, welcoming. Like, does this actually feel like an epicenter of like centralized government? The way that, like, you know, I guess at the state level, when you arrive on Colfax and whatever, and you got the Capitol building and this massive civic lawn and, you know, fucking state Congress and like, whoa, we have arrived clearly somewhere, no matter where you got dropped off from on the planet in that zone, you realize you're somewhere important. Are we achieving that here is kind of the way I'm reading this. And Kailani, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's kind of the spirit of what this criteria is. In the spirit of that, um, a welcoming public building, um, it would be good to get the board sense of, and I think you may have covered it by covering the other criteria too. So it may be a reiteration of some of that, some of the criteria overlap. And because we have three layers of criteria here, they're all kind of playing with each other a little bit. For sure, for sure. I think my, it's just, it's fortunately unfortunate for this project that we are leveraging the existing structure of the pavilion building, because I guess this north west facing courtyard and this like forced Paseo, like, boy, I hope it's successful. And, 15 years but it's it's a relic and an artifact of sort of the foundational structure you guys have to work off of i would think if this was if we were doing a ground up building we would want to flip this diagram north south and we would want to have this wonderful sun pocket it's clearly you know when you pull in from the street it's visible from a vehicular and sort of a pedestrian standpoint and it's not this sort of hidden tucked against the residential uh sort of background of what could be the foyer of the civic experience and entry gateways through this plaza. So I think that's just the nature of leveraging the existing building. Um, so Kalani, I, I'm, I guess I'm kind of curious about yeah. um, the uses of the building and whether that's, whether the, um, the offices and the uses inside the building suggest that it's sort of the central government um location i i don't know if i completely understand the question but i would say michelle cranes here and she's able to talk about the western city campus and some of the issues okay i guess i'm wondering if um so well my question is more like is this is this going to be 
sort of staff that does all the work or is it going to be a higher level of of government so it's just repl it's replacing the city offices that were oh jeff why didn't you just plug mustard's last stand into that flower pot dude that would have been perfect yeah <laughs> That feels a little like a third rail. Um, I, I'm just going to help chime in a, a little bit um, on on some of the, the consolidation. And so this goes a bit back to our recent facilities master plan. Currently, we have city services scattered throughout the city. Um, all kinds of different customer service hubs, places where you know PMDS and HHS um, deliver services. And we still have, you know, the civic area and our, our historic municipal building downtown. And so a lot of what this site has been working to achieve is a certain amount of consolidation of city services to deliver those services more effectively to the community. Um, the way, Rory, you described it is that down in Denver was, was never quite the, you know, like how we conceived this site in this location where it is like the kind of end all be all and, and there, it's it's really sort of part of, I think, a greater fabric um, of how we deliver services in the community. And so this site um, that the city purchased back in 2015, and one of the drivers was to address kind of the scattered nature and, and of, of our current delivery of a lot of uh, our services that happen out of office buildings. Um, we also realized we just can't fit all of the city services in this one location. So we've started to look at other opportunities to create um, some consolidation. And so we have an Eastern campus that was identified as well. And looking at how we do continue to support our downtown civic area, the historic kind of civic core. And that's going through its own kind of process right now to really assess that. Um, so what this is accomplishing uh, is right now, nearly consolidation of services and staff who primarily do office work, but also deliver a lot of customer services across 10 buildings right now into this one location. Um, so okay. we do, like we'll centralize yeah. services here, but also still deliver those services in some other locations. Right. And it sounds, it sounds like there wouldn't be like evening public meetings that DAB wouldn't meet there necessarily. No, or... That is actually so um, that is an intention with the programming here is acknowledging that actually we have a huge lack of, of engagement space. So we uh -huh. commonly rent spaces, uh, you know, transportation, utilities, they all do community engagement. So that's a lot of that intention for that, that um, northwestern corner and jam is right. to actually provide space for the community. So I think as we see, and I, I really appreciated the discussion, but as we see people coming in the evening, maybe by bus or however, that, you know, there there are several ways to access and use the building, particularly at the ground floor. So that permeability has been actually a pretty um, core concept for us to really feel like you can access city government if you're at some of our buildings today. That's not a, a lot of the experience. Um, but that is the intention is that we actually do have on that ground floor um, and at that layer that we access the ability to have boards, commissions, and those kinds of meetings, as well as on all those upper floors, we're consolidating some 600 staff um, right. to do office work. Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's, yeah. that's helpful. And I feel like in our discussion that we had about the um, the entries, we've we really established that there's good porosity on this first floor um, that I do feel like it... <laughs> Um, you know, maybe it's too welcoming to the public and, and there needs to be like <laughs> some um, element of, uh, I don't know, I'm sure that there's going to be security, you know, because otherwise, like that third floor patio looks pretty rad to me and I would go hang out there for sure. You guys um, skateboard there. Yeah, are you guys going to do happy hour up there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pretty cool views and stuff, but I do think that that first floor, um, it, you know, if we're talking about the public buildings in Denver, like the Wellington Webb building, it has that same, like, open, you know, corridor lobby space. Um, and it just, it does feel very public and in the same way. I think it, I think it, it has achieved that. Mm -hmm. This comment's interesting because architecturally, I think we are saying that we think it's achieving it 
as far as the architecture can. And then I think a lot of it is programming and customer service as far as addressing this. I mean, walking into Mustard's last stand, mistakenly trying to get to the plans office. Do I take the stairs that are definitely not to code? Do I take the elevator, which I hope I don't get stuck in? Which floor do I get out at? Am I in the right building? Like, hopefully you guys are solving for all this. And it looks like programmatically you are. And the floor plan of this kind of main entry porosity level with sort of a central lobby and hub where ideally you will interact with a person. That is certainly the intention, is to do all the things that you described today that are a challenge and, and to try to, within an existing building and a constrained site, um, try to achieve those things and, and acknowledging we'll still be looking for other places in the city to provide services. And we will have a hot dog cart in the plaza. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think we've kind of covered all the bases unless there's, unless any DAB members have anything else you want to raise. I'm not quite sure how to summarize this. It doesn't seem like we came up with a whole lot of recommendations. I think it's more kind of praise of what you're doing. Um, and maybe some slight tweaks, but do any any DAB members have any uh, any other comments before we sort of wrap this up? It's like we're going to maybe break before six. So, so let me so help me with this summary. So I I think on the first issue, um, the 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 main comment was that there's a, sort of a lack of hierarchy in the entryways among the entrances. And the south entrance feels like the sort of the natural entrance, even though the north one is much more inviting. Um, but the south entrance is more probably the main entrance because of the parking structure and because that's maybe the primary access. Um, hard to hard to tell though at this point. Um, so the main, I, I think the main recommendation there was to just to flip the um, the north and south entrances and make the south entrance sort of the main one. Well, I think that, yeah, just indicating, just indicate the south as the indicate. Right. Indicate, okay. well, yes, indicate that the south is primary, but also, um, you know, to acknowledge the north, it, if we want to acknowledge it as, as, as one of the primary entrances, that it needs some... Um, feature monumental sign wayfinding right. some feature elements that are um you know closer to the east of broadway yeah the trail of breadcrumbs i, I like yes. love it when rory comes up with these things yes i just don't know how to translate them so don't just don't um, put it in the minutes <laughs> <laughs> um and then we uh the the next issue um we talk more about the the parking structure and um, and the idea of I guess there were a couple of things there, but there nothing very major. I don't think there was a uh, Brendan mentioned keeping the um, grounding the base of the parking structure, maybe maybe lowering the facade yeah. at the at the at that one end, the more the north end of that. Lower, um, lowering the base, yeah. Right, and. Um, there was some sadness around the loss of the commercial spaces there. So, um, but Rory mentioned po the possibility of the, the concept of the art gallery on the street. I don't know if you want to elaborate on that. I think um, if we're, if we're, if the intent is for a summary that we can, you know, kind of put a bow on here, I think it's just that we agree with staff's concern and we would encourage uh, incorporation of additional transparent elements that reach okay. down to the pedestrian scale. They don't necessarily have, and we can just leave it at that. We don't have to get right. into the program behind it or my personal feelings about flower pepper. <laughs> okay. All right. And then the other issue, um, the two were sort of tied together. One was the, um, had more to do with, uh, let's see, the, the building design um, including materials, color, roof form, style. It's, yeah, it's like material use and character. And character. Consistency. Yeah, and material use and character consistency. 
Right. And I think and I don't think there was any recommendation there as far as uh, I, I think the recommendation was, at least from my perspective, was to share a little bit more from the pavilion uh -huh. to the parking structure. And I don't okay. think we need to get specific in exactly how to detail that, but I think an encouragement of sharing a little bit more of the detail and materiality richness from the pavilion to the parking structure. Right. Okay. And then the final one was dealing with the um, with the area plan, uh, making it safe, efficient, and welcoming uh, to the community, and that and with the acknowledgement that it's a a central um, public government location. Somehow, sort of emphasizing that. I mean, this is the most incredible example of a civic building in the city of Boulder. I think they've done a great job. I, the security piece, real quick, we could tag into this. I'm curious, the other dad members, this northeastern courtyard, like, again, I'm just picturing uh, where we used to hold our dad meetings, right, where, you know, the bike path dives under, but like it's, and that's like a multi-porous building where you come from the parking adjacent to the library, you've got mm -hmm. the pedestrian crossing from 11th and the Rio Grande from Pearl Street, and then you've got, you know, the bike path feeding in from Central Park. That is a mess as far as vagrancy and scary and not safe, and particularly if it's nighttime, and I guess I would just want to go on record saying we are creating a northeast facing courtyard and let's do what we can programmatically electronically whatever it may be to somehow not make this turn into some sort of vagrancy garden mm -hmm. yeah and i that comment that i made about um the massing of the residential i think is is going to be really key to that paseo and that courtyard that if you have these towering you know, fully built out um, residential units, just making that Paseo more of a, a cap, a, you know, a canyon, that that, that does sort of create, um, it doesn't have that, you know, it, it also has to have some kind of a human feel because we're just talking about one side of that Paseo. And I think the, how these additional buildings tie in is gonna be really key to the functioning of that um, plaza space and the paseo and the entry. Um, so I, I do think, you know, we're looking at it from this, like the site plan, but, uh, you know, I'm thinking of it more, like more, more holistically of the whole um, development of that block. Oh, I, if I can just offer just just to, to be fair to our colleagues who are, are working on those buildings, what I have represented on the screen is clearly a, 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 an abstraction of, of the, the floor plates as opposed to trying to suggest this is where their, their design is, is headed. So I just, I just want to be fair and acknowledge that um, what's illustrated here um, deserves their, their ability to, to sort of illustrate what their intent is. Are those and, and buildings, you, you, Justin, you are those buildings the same, roughly the same height as the pavilion? They have they have a, a variation in height. Some are taller, some are a bit lower, I believe, as you shift west on the site. And and I think the the staff intro actually had some imagery that that referenced um, some of the, the work in process. Uh -huh. um, so I, I, I would very hesitant to misrepresent somebody else's work, but I think there is some some variation in roof pitch and height and, and density of those as opposed to the sort of very consistent right. flat uh, blocks that we're showing in this point. Yeah. When are those they're, coming through, Deb Kalani? They're not, they're form-based code. So they are represented as residential development with the exception of the one facing Broadway, which is a mixed use building. And I believe that the pavilion and that, that particular building in the parking structure are the only flat roof buildings because the area plan stipulates that the rest of them need to be pitched roof based on community input and planning board input over at time. But Chandler, can yeah, talk do, more do, about that in the middle if you want details. Yeah, if you guys want me to just pull up that one slide that shows the buildings kind of in scale, I'm happy to do that real quick just for fun.
So all those wild ideas about the flood channel, like going right through the property and like elevated Paseo and all that, none of that stuck to the board, huh? No, because the alter the floodplain into the center of the site was not going to be a possibility. The engineering wasn't possible. Got it. Okay. So that's the north edge. Yeah. We're looking at Paseo. We're looking down Balsam. So the, the Paseo is kind of hidden from view right now. Do you have that shot of the Paseo though, where it's like looking into what essentially is the courtyard? Because I think, um, Brandon, that's what you're after, right? Is what is the other defining, you know, what creates the fourth wall of the Paseo? Yeah, none of these, the none of these really show the Paseo terribly well. It's right there. I see it though. It's that L-shaped building on the lower left. Right. Where there's yeah. a sort of residential wing that sort of uh, put, turns its head onto that plaza. So some of the units will look down into it. Yeah. That'll, that may help. And the height is lower. Yeah. Yeah. And the Paseo, so they, they came in with a, a separate infrastructure plan. So the Paseo is kind of designed as part of the overall sitewood infrastructure plan. And there are a bunch of um, seating areas and landscape areas. Like it's a, it's a pretty cool design for the Paseo. It's not just a straight shot path or anything like that hmm. is there any acknowledgement when it hits the plaza does it like create an eddy into that or carve any sort of move into the residential mixed use building or is that just like a flat facade for four stories which i guess um, is out of purview there's entryways so there's there's um entryways to the ground floor residential units all along the sale okay got it so we only have a couple minutes left before six, which is kind of our hard stop. So um, any any DAB members have any other uh, ideas or thoughts you want to share before we wrap this up and let the applicant go for the evening? No? OK. Well, thank you. Um, we appreciate your presentation. And I think you've kind of picked up on the idea that this looks like a really incredible project. And so congratulations on that. And hopefully we've given you some ideas and food for thought and all that stuff. So thank yeah, you again. I really appreciate the feedback and the comments. Sure. Like there's some actionable stuff here and, and frankly enjoyed the conversation. So again, Great. thanks. Okay. Likewise, yeah. Thank you for all your time, everyone. It's so we, got, we have a couple more things to do as a board. So we'll just let you guys yeah. sort of. Thank you. And. Um... We did it. Did we get two minutes early? Is that right? Or are we supposed to get through board matters by six? Well, I think we we're supposed to get through the the project. We had about an hour and a half after the presentation, so um, I guess I had a kind of a feeling that we wouldn't have a huge amount to talk about because they've really thought through this project. You know, yeah. obviously. Um, so, plus we're missing Stephen, so we don't know what he would have added to it. Um, so the next item on the agenda is just matters from the board. Yes, um, staff does not have any matter for you unless the board has any other matters items they'd like to bring up. Okay. And I just, I asked Kalani this, I think, uh, earlier to, or maybe it was yesterday. I can't remember, but, um, there's, you said there's six applicants for the yeah, we, I want to see, well, there's six total where it, there was an additional five in this new opening round of applications for DAB. So we completed four interviews so far. There is one remaining interview next week. And then I believe that we'll be looking to appoint sometime in, sometime in June. I right. don't know if it'll be in time for your June meeting or not. Yeah, okay. they're, they're looking at schedule. Right. Well, I'm happy to stay on if needed, but otherwise... 
I'll I'll see you all at at Rory and my din and my dinner. Right. We would love to yes. have you for June <laughs> if uh, you don't have um if we don't have a board member as a right. that particular date. Um, but I'll be in contact with you too to let you know kind of the schedule for that. Okay. Are we doing dinners again? Is that back on, or did they cut mm -hmm. those? From the it's no. It's, they owe us a dinner now. They owe you one. Yeah. Wait, are they not doing that anymore, Kalani? As part of the no, budget? we have a group appreciation like board volunteer dinner. I believe Amanda, is that correct? It's an annual larger group thing that has happened. Wow. So the pandemic really shook all the nickels <laughs> out of the couch, huh? <laughs> it's going into this building. No, I'm not aware <laughs> that was of my first larger, question. like board and commission. It may have been a one time right after COVID was like a group thing when we weren't doing, um, you know, private events or anything like that. Right. I think um, we did one for Lauren, maybe. Mm -hmm. We definitely we did, did one for our Jim, last. Uh... Our last one was for Jim, and it was actually like maybe two weeks before the shutdown. And then we yeah, where was that? That was at uh, Corelli's. No, we did another one after that. I think that one was. I think we did one more. I'm I not that. That. We did so those aren't on the docket, mm -hmm. but we can do them on our own. Mm -hmm. I right. suppose, Todd, if we wanted to get together. We did something at the Rio, but maybe that was we just did. A... That was the Rio right before COVID. Right. Yeah. I think Jim was there. I believe so. Yeah. I think that the Corellis was on Jameson last time. Ah, Jameson, yeah. Yeah. Where he got his sweet framed piece of pho yes. photographic history. That is yeah. still part of the partying staff gift for folks. So, well, we'll do we'll do something. Yeah, we are planning on um, something. So, I will be in contact with you, Claude, to see if you could still do June. Um, if you're available, if we don't have a new board member seated at that point, okay. but we also have a new uh, planning board member that's going to be sitting in. Right. So that should also be starting next month. Okay. All right. Well, this was a good review. So thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Meeting is over, I guess. Okay. Thank, thank you all. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. Take care.